So completing the square, simply enough little process you may think, something you do in the higher for two or maybe even three marks, and a useful thing to do with quadratics at the same time. However, whenever you have a process like that, some process you go through several stages and it's the same each time, just different numbers. Whenever you do that, very often there's a formula for that. An example, to digress, would be when you're trying to find a point that cuts a line in a certain ratio. So if you had a line AB and you want to cut it in the ratio of M to N, for instance, there is a process that you can go through. Of course, there are cases where if the numbers are conducive, if the numbers are simple enough, you can do it by inspection. However, since it is a process that you go through and it's the same process every time you go through it, and you might have been given different recipes for going through it with, there is a formula called the section formula, which looks like this. The position vector of this point is 1 over m plus n, that's the total number of steps, of n times a plus m times b. However, that seems to have been tucked away out of sight lately, like some old embarrassing eccentric relative. Oh, wait, there's the section formula, quick, close the curtains. Yet, yeah, you seem to readily embrace its simple wee pal, the midpoint formula. In terms of two-dimensional coordinates, section formula, Midpoint formula. Just this, where well, m and n are both equal to 1. But of course, just because there's a formula doesn't mean you need to use it, unless things are getting a little bit tough for you numerically, because there's always the case, which usually you get in exams anyway, where the numbers are conducive enough to be done by inspection. So that here, for instance, if I make that the point 2, 1, and make that the point 12, 16, choosing my numbers carefully, and split it in the ratio of 3 to 2, then I can readily find P without resorting to the formula, or going through the routine, no matter which recipe you were given for it, simply by saying, I'm 3 out of the 5, I'm 3 fifths of the way from A to B, so where am I? Well, 2 to 12 is 10 steps, 3 fifths of that is 6, so 6 steps on takes me to 8. 1 to 16 is 15 steps. 3 fifths of 9, so 9 further on is 10, and you couldn't actually do it any quicker than that using a formula. But it is there should you need it. And so it is with completing the square. So, completing the square then. Well, in last year's hire, you had this to do. It gave you this quadratic expression and it said, write it in the form of, they don't tend to use the words complete the square, so write it in the form of, and it goes P times X plus Q squared plus R, or something like that. Well, the process is, it's easy to form a square if it's just X squared, if it's a monic quadratic. However, if there's anything in front, take it out to reduce it just to X squared. Of course, that means everything else will have to be divided by this. So that quite nicely drops down to four. Notice, those have been chosen quite nicely to make it fairly straightforward. And then you can either include the 11 or not include it. I prefer not to include it, but you'll have your own little recipe, your own little favourite method of going through this. And then once you've got this, you can say, right, now I'm going to make it into a square. What does it take here to complete this square? Well, if you're squaring this little binomial part. It's square the first, square the last, in the middle twice the product. So that must have been x to produce that. I don't know what that is yet, but if that's twice the product, and I've got x already, then double this number is negative four, so you've just got to half it. So that must be minus two. Then square the last makes that a plus four, but that was extra, that wasn't there. It'll need to come off of something, it'll need to come away again. But it's not just four, it's two of them. So there's two fours which are eight to come off. So I've got to take away eight to balance it. And then that gives you plus three. Now that actually wasn't too bad. But what if you were given something like this? Three minus five X minus seven X squared to do. You wouldn't be quite so happy with that. Those numbers aren't too nice to work with. It's going to get a little bit cumbersome here. Well, I'll not do that just now. We'll just think, well, what is this process you just went through? What would happen in the general case if this was your quadratic, using the same steps? 
Well, you take out that a to make it just go x squared. That means this has to be divided by it, so it's b over a. I'll just leave the c out of it, conclude it if you like. And then I'll form a square from this. So that would have to be an x, and if that's twice the product, I'll have to half this. Now, that means either half the top number, if you know it's halfable, or double the bottom number, so I'll double the bottom number, which then means that this part here will be the square of that, b squared over 4a squared. b over 2a times b over 2a. Now that was extra, so I'll need to take it away, but there's more than one of them, so I'll have to take away a times it, but a times it will knock out that square, so I'm really going to take away b squared over 4a. I'd rather tidy that into a single term though, I'll give it a common denominator of 4a, so that'll have to get multiplied by 4a, and you've got, ringing a bell here, 4ac. So what is this part that gets added on? Look, that's that discriminant in reverse. So I could say subtract. Subtract, and I'll use that little symbol. Capital D, Greek alphabet, for discriminant. Subtract the discriminant over 4a, and there you go. That's a formula. Oh, it falls quite nicely into place, look. Whatever's at the front, a, 2 times a, 4 times a. In the middle is the b term. In the end, it's not just the c term, it's the discriminant. Of course, that's its downfall. You'd have to work out the discriminant first to use this formula here. First, if I go back to this one, what would 2x squared minus 8x plus 11 be if I just used my formula? Well, the first thing I'd have to do is I'd have to work out the discriminant. Well, that's going to be square the middle term, which is 64, minus... 4ac, 4 times 2 is 8, that's minus 88, so that's a negative number, minus 24. But once you've got that, it just falls into place. Take out the 2, b divided by twice this, so that's, well maybe I'll just write it out, so it's 8 divided by twice that, which is 4 squared, minus the discriminant, which happens to be a negative, so I'll make it plus the discriminant over 4 times this now, which is 8. Maybe it didn't seem too long, but of course, Having written that, I'll need to tidy it up, although you could have done that bit in your head. So 2 times x minus 2 squared plus 3, as before. Was it easier? Possibly. But well, possibly not, because these numbers were quite conducive to just doing almost by inspection. So, what about that wee nasty one at the beginning? That one. Wouldn't fancy that in the exam, I would warrant, eh? Well, probably the first, you don't need to actually switch that around because you can still identify A, B and C quite easily. A is negative 7, B is negative 5 and C is 3. But you probably would write it this way, first of all, negative 7x squared minus 5x plus 3. Then, if you were to use the formula, the downfall is you'll need to work out the discriminant. It's not that bad, really. Square the middle term, that's 25, minus because that's a negative, so it'll be plus 4 times that times that, whichever way it's easy to do that, that's 12, 7s are 84, so that's 109. Oh, that wasn't too bad. And in fact, as soon as you've worked that out, you've got the answer, because it all just drops onto the page. Look, a, negative 7, x, b over, b is negative 5 over double that, well, that'll make it into a plus, don't know why I put that down, that'll be... 5 over 14 squared minus the discriminant 109 divided by 4 times that that's negative so it'll be plus and 4 times that's 28 and that's it done now i think it's quite useful using it in these nasty situations now having a quadratic in the completed squared form is actually quite handy for solving equations if you went back to that first one which was this if you actually had to solve that original equation equal to some number like 21 for instance. You don't need to gather that back up and then try and figure out factorizations by playing about with factors. That's conducive to being solved immediately because there's only one mention of x. You can whittle that down to x by digging down through the functions. Take away the three, take away the two, take away the square, take away the negative two, and you're there. Take away the three. Take three away from this side, you're down to 18. Take that two across and you're down to nine. I'll just do those two steps in one. So now you've got x minus two squared is nine. Do the square root. So x minus two will be the square root of nine is three, but it could be positive or negative. And finally, take that across as an add two, two plus or minus three, which gives you two solutions. Two take away three, negative one, two plus three, five. 
So if you did that in the general case then, where you had this completed square equal to zero, well, we'll go through the same stages. Take this across, so that'll go across as, I'll rewrite that as b squared minus 4ac, all over 4a. And at the same time, when that goes across, I could divide by my a, because that would just turn that into 4a squared. So x plus b upon 2a squared equals that. Two steps to the answer now. Get rid of the square, square root. x plus b upon 2a is the square root. Now, the square root of a fraction it means the square root of the two parts, which is quite handy. Given that, b squared minus 4 ac, that's a perfect square. That's going to drop to 2a. Now, that's plus or minus. I'll put that at the top, though. And the last step, and you can see where this is heading, bring this across, we'll have to subtract. Negative b upon 2a plus or minus the square root. I'll not say it yet. Because now I've got a common denominator, which means the whole thing can just be written over 2a. There you are, the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this, completing the square formula, was just halfway to getting the quadratic formula. Well, in fact, it was more than halfway, because this formula had to have all the jiggery-pokery in it of creating these terms, whereas from that point onwards, it was just a straightforward process of digging down till you got to x. There you go, completing the square formula. Use it if you like.